we should be live. Brian, thanks for the opportunity today. Absolutely, Tyler. And, you know, the one thing I hear over and over and over, and I'm sure you're hearing it too, is how do I get more sellers? So I think that's one of the main things that we're just going to talk about today. So, you know, and, and I want to say this idea real quick before I let Tyler do his thing. Information is the most valuable commodity in the world. And so what Tyler's going to share with us today is how to take that information that his company has and then apply it into some practical applications of getting us more listings, which every single agent I talk to says the same thing. Where do I get more listings from? So with that, without any further ado, I'm going to pass it over to you, Tyler. So Brian, I appreciate the opportunity, guys. So again, my name is Tyler Stenick, and I'm over here at Coal Information, Coal Realty Resource. Been here for 16 years, but I always like to backtrack a little bit because our company has been around for 70 years, seven decades we've wow. been in the business, right? And we've kind of repositioned ourselves, rebranded ourselves over the years. But Brian, have you heard of us, like the big old big crisscross directory that we always printed? Yeah, right? absolutely. Yeah, I've been, you know, and I've personally worked with you guys, I want to say five or six years, don't quote me, I've yeah. slept and, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but yes, we definitely use you for our data. We use it for yeah. circle prospecting and, and you know, neighborhood. We, we use you guys. It's, it's absolutely, a great data. Absolutely. So, so guys, and we're the company, If maybe a past life, a past job, or maybe as a realtor, when you first got started and your broker said, hey, here's this book, start calling everybody on Apple Street, right? We're that company. So prior to technology, right, prior to the internet, we were known for printing these big blue crisscross directories. And they were like a phone book, right? But a phone book had everybody by last name, these directories were everybody by street name. So I could go find, let's say, Patterson Street, and it would tell me everybody up and down that street by house number, their phone number, how long they live there, some demographics about it. So any realtor, yeah, could maybe invite neighbors to an open house. Maybe they had a new listing. They want to let the neighbors know about it. But anybody, any small business would use it, Brian. So, you know, a tree trimmer would use it because they wanted to contact the neighbors if they're going to send out a crew to go trim trees. And I remember about 16 years ago, right when I started, the TV series Law and Order actually called our marketing team and said, hey, will you send out some directories onto our set because we want to have a law detective call from the crisscross directory out of apartment building to see if they saw the break-in that happened in the apartment building in New York City, right? So that's who we are. And then fast forward to where we're at now, it's online at your fingertips 24-7 where you can log in, do queries based off of income, length of residence, all this information by neighborhood, and then get everybody's cell phone numbers and email addresses. But what I really want to talk about today, Brian, is the importance of reaching out to people, right? You all have your own sphere, right? You have your own database. Those are number ones. I call them the Mets. These are the Mets, right? Yeah, but then absolutely. you have your not Mets. How do you get in front of people that you've never met before? How do you build that sphere? And how do you do it with a high ROI? Right. We all can go out there and buy lead sources. They're all out there. Mm -hmm. But when it's all said and done, you got to look, look at your numbers, especially right now, because we don't know what the rest of Q4 is going to bring. We don't know what Q1 is going to bring. So I challenge everybody today. Look at what you're spending on when you're buying leads. Right. Are you making money off of buying these leads? How much money are you actually buying off of them? Or one of the common themes that I've heard, and it's not all, all the time, that I hear a lot of agents that say, Tyler, I spend a ton of money on buying leads, but I just chase them. They don't actually convert. And so I want to talk about just some strategies today that you guys can maybe take data, know into this information, and have conversations with folks. So I'm going to go in here. Let me pay you back something real quick before yeah. you start that. So yeah. we're all here about the changes that are happening in our industry right now. So the stuff that Tyler's going to show you today is stuff that you can control. I can't control what Zillow does. I can't control what Realtor.com does. I can't control what any of these third parties do. Mm -hmm. What I can control, though, is what I do with data like this. Mm -hmm. So if you're one of those people out there who's like, oh, my God, what's going to happen in two years when Zillow won't sell me a lead anymore? Mm -hmm. This is a webinar for you to watch because this allows you to bring that control back into your business and not count on those third parties. Absolutely. That's exactly right. So what are the strategies to do it? And that's what we're going to talk about, right? And the first thing I'll talk about is how to engage with your local communities, guys. It's very important. So you know the farms, you know the subdivisions that you really want to own the mind share of that neighborhood, right? It could be a neighborhood that you live in. It could be a neighborhood that your kids go to school in, that you go to church in. But, you know, Greg Harrelson, he's a top 100 agent. He's been a client of ours for about a decade. And I, I, I've interviewed him several times over the years. But one of the first things that he'll say, Brian, is, well, the most important thing is you need to know who lives in that farm. And you, know, you need to know a way to get a hold of them. How do you contact with them? How do you just 
have conversations with them. And he'll say before the epidemic, right, before the pandemic that we're in, the best way to do that would be to maybe hold some sort of community event. He would think about like a barbecue in the park and then invite all the neighbors to come. Because I didn't want, he goes, I didn't want to call all these people right away. They don't know me yet. I don't want to ask them if they want to sell their house yet. It just, it's not the first, first approach I want to be known as. Now, during a pandemic, you probably can't hold a big barbecue in a big party. So let's think oh, outside the box. Right, or you shouldn't, right? So let's think outside the box. Think about all the nonprofits that really need our support right now. I know of food banks that are at record lows and have no food on the shelves, right? Their, their shelves are empty. I know of blood banks. Like I link in Nebraska where I live, our blood bank is at record lows. People aren't donating blood anymore because normally they were at work. They would go to their big office and the blood mobile would come to the parking lot and over their lunch break, they'd go donate blood. Guess what? They're working from home now. So I have heard agents all across the country that are being creative with this. And they're going to their, their local food pantry and saying, hey, would you want me to do a diaper drive for your, for your, uh, for your uh, food shelter? And they're going to say yes. So now you can go to a specific neighborhood with that approach. And hey, we're going to be at the neighborhood park on Saturday from noon to two. We'd love for you to stop by and donate diapers. Right, and we'll donate a hundred dollars worth of diapers matched on on the amount of diapers we get back, something like that, right? Or hey, we're gonna have the Lincoln Blood Mobile set up at the Lincoln Sheridan Lutheran Church at 70th and Old Cheney on Saturday. We're gonna be doing it socially distancing, so make sure to arrive during these time slots. Can I sign you up in one of these time slots, right? So you do all these things and brand it that hey, I am a local realtor, I'm at 70th and Old Cheney. We're in this together. I'm not an e-agent that's in a, diff in a different state, right? And, and I'm here to help you with your real estate needs. But first and foremost, let's support this nonprofit together. Absolutely. Right? So now what happens is these homeowners are letting their guard down, right? They're seeing that you're in the trenches with them. And it allows you to have conversations with people, right? Where are you from originally, Brian? Oh, Gothenburg, huh? Oh, that's a couple hours west of here, right? Oh, do you have family back there still? Have you ever thought about moving back there to be closer to them? Exactly. A very non-confrontational conversation. What do you love about this neighborhood? Is there anything that you don't love? And then people start opening up and you'll hear things like, you know what? We love this neighborhood, but you know, we've been here for 20 years now. And a lot of our friends have moved away. Our last daughter graduated a few years ago. We might be ready to downsize. What did you just do? You created your own lead. It's a lead that you're not depending on another lead source to get. It's something that you can put into your nurture and depending on that conversation, you can prioritize them as, wow, they are a one. They're a priority one. They're people that are going to move in probably three to six months. Or it might be somebody who might be, maybe you think that they might move in six to 12 months, or it could be somebody that says, hey, I'm never going to move out of this house. You're going to have to carry me out with in, in my casket. Okay. Maybe they're not a high lead for you, but there's somebody you can keep in your database to ask for referrals, et cetera. Okay. This is how you guys start network networking with the neighborhood. And then you start using other data points to do that, right? Obviously, you can pick up the phone and call. You can door knock if that's still allowed in your neighborhood or in, in where you're at, right? But then with Cole, we have an email. We have an email for about half of all homeowners. So now you can take that email. And I'm not going to email all of Lincoln, Nebraska, population 300,000. That doesn't do me any good, right? But could I email the 300 people we have emails for in Edenton South subdivision? And in the subject line, can I put fundraiser in Edenton South subdivision? That's probably going to get a, pr a pretty high open rate, right? Or start providing a monthly e-newsletter for that neighborhood. So if you put Edenton South September newsletter, I guess our, we're already in November, <laughs> November <laughs> newsletter, gosh. Uh, but then you can start getting really high open rates and you provide them content. So again, you can also let them know the number, you know, the nonprofits working, right, that, that are around. Maybe it's a, a restaurant that you want to support. You know, restaurants really need our support right now, guys. So you be the hero. Go team up with a few ro local restaurants and now get the word out that these are five restaurants in your zip code. Here's their daily takeout specials. Go support one of these restaurants. And, hey, you know what? I'll have a, a, binister, I'll have a canister set out front. To, don't, to drop off diapers while you're at, when you're at Joe's barbecue shop, right? That's how you interact with the community. 
but then everything that you're doing to be known as the industry expert, right? Have that information off, off hand. So when people do ask you information, you know the number of transactions that are happening. You know if home values are up, are they down? And then be branded that you are the, the expert here to help. I love that you wrote two things in that bottom thing. Think long-term and then come from contribution. So guys, if you think you're going to start farming and then next week you're going to get 25 listings from it, that's not what this is about. Nope. This is for someone who plans on being in the business long-term. And here's the thing, it's a pipeline like everything else. So everyone who's like, well, I tried it for a month and it didn't work. I guarantee you, if you try it for a month, it won't work. Mm -hmm. So this is a long-term play and keep that in mind, but yep. it's a great play. The, the agents who have listings right now, this is what they did mm -hmm. 12, 18, 24 yes. months ago. And this is something that continues regardless of what's going on in the industry. So absolutely. Right. And then Brian, then it goes back is, okay, now I have that neighborhood. Now you can start any letting the neighbors know about any sort of activity in the neighborhood. Right. And that's your common Hey, a new listing in the neighborhood. Now's the time to pick up your neighbors. Hey, there might be some extra traffic in the neighborhood. We just listed a property and you can put that on the subject line. Just listed at 505 Apple Street. Guess what? It's going to get a pretty high open rate, right? Yep. Uh, virtual open houses. Okay. Here's a, vir you know, again, you can let the neighbors know about an open house and it's a virtual open house. You know, attend my virtual open house at, on 505 Apple Street. So you start branding that all the time and have conversations. And I love Tiffany. I just saw that right now, uh, the chat box. I'm doing a coat drive right now in my area, partnering with a local restaurant, and I've received three credible leads, right? And those are leads that are exclusive to you. You're not fighting with them with, you know, all these other agents. Because the other thing I'm talking about, when you buy leads, you, the thing that happens is Joe Smith, homeowner, most likely didn't just go to one website and fill out one form. They went to numerous forms. So you're, you're filling out numerous forms. So you, you're dealing with other agents as well. So these are people that, you know, you get, make a first impression, do an outreach, right? And then just, you know, think outside the box with different ways to have conversations with people and leverage technology to help make it happen. So I want to just tell this quick story, Brian. Uh, John, John Mosillo, he's a friend of mine. He's an agent in New Hampshire. And he had seen me doing some of these webinars with Greg, Greg Harrelson, my case story prop previously, right? And a lot mm -hmm. of people know Greg in the industry. He's, he's a top dog, right? He is, he's doing hundreds of transactions a year. He is a mentor. He's out everywhere, right? And so what John, when he came to me, he's like, Tyler, I think you should interview me because I'm not, I'm not that, right? I'm, I'm doing really well in my market and I'm doing a, new, you know, a couple of transactions a month, but I'm never going to make thousands of phone calls a month, right? But John wanted to tell his story where he leveraged technology to help do some of that, to automate some of those things, right? So basically he said is that he had a great family that wanted to live in a specific neighborhood, John did. Mm -hmm. And they said, John, you can sell our property, but we are not gonna list it with you until you can find us a house in our dream neighborhood. We're gonna be picky this time around. We're not gonna settle. So. John went into our product, grabbed the 600 and some neighbors, their cell phones and emails out of that specific neighborhood. And he took the cell phone numbers and he put them into slide dial and their broadcast feature. So slide dial is a ringless voicemail where you can record a voicemail, hit a button and will deliver that voicemail without the, someone's cell phone work, uh, ringing. It costs about a penny or two per delivered voicemail, depending on what plan you have. There's a different plan. It's very, it's very cheap. Very cheap, right? And so what John did is he recorded a voicemail that went like this. Hey there, my name is John Mosso. I'm a local realtor just down the street from your neighborhood. I'm actually at 70th and Old Cheney, but I wanted to give you a call because I have a great family that really wants to live in your neighborhood. They currently live on Patterson Street right now. And I'm not sure if you're familiar with Patterson Street. It's one of the busiest streets in town. And they actually live by the intersection and they're scared for their two young kids to even play outside in the front yard. They want to live in your neighborhood because it's quiet, has big trees. And when the kids get a little bit older, they might be able to walk to El Maxi Elementary, which is the, the elementary just down the street from your, from, your, from your neighborhood. Was wondering if you knew of anybody who might be looking to sell their house right now and maybe haven't listed it. I just love to bring my buyers through the property before it might hit the market. Very non-intrusive voicemail. He got a Google phone number, a local Google phone number. Used that as he dropped the voicemail. That way, if people called him back, he knew instantly it was in regards to that message he had just dropped, right? And you can get a Google phone number free or up to 10 bucks a month, depending on how much you use it. 
Okay. He also sent an email. So he got the 300 and some emails out of that neighborhood, put in the subject line, buyers looking in Edenton South subdivision. Fast forward, had a retired couple who the husband replied to his voicemail, called him back. Ironically, the wife had gotten the email, replied to the email at the same time. They were looking at a retirement home and hadn't, hadn't done anything yet. John brought his buyers to the property. They loved it. And he got a pocket listing out of the deal. Okay. So I challenge everybody today is if you have buyers that want to live next to a golf course, want to live closer to their in-laws, want to downsize and move to their dream neighborhood, leverage that. Because Brian, you tell me, I know you're talking to agents all across the country. Inventory is pretty low still everywhere you go, right? Yeah. Inventory is a train wreck right now. Every, everybody, everyone has the same complaint. I don't, ha- I, I've got a buyer, and but there's no houses to sell them. I hear that every single day. Exactly. So what I love about this is two things and, and, you know, kudos to Johnny Mo. We trade, we teach Johnny people Mo. to do, yep. yeah, we, we teach people to do exactly what he's doing mm-hmm. here. What he's saying is, and it does two things. So let's say he doesn't get a pocket listing out of this, but he gets to go show this potential buyer a house that wasn't even listed. Do you think that buyer's really going to go and work with another agent? Like exactly. how many people would literally do this? And we used to do a similar thing. We're like, hey, we'll go door knock the neighborhood. Obviously mm-hmm. right now, that's not a super good idea, yeah, depending right. on where you live. And, and again, you know, but so that's what I love about this is he's bringing value to a potential seller, getting a pocket listing or even a potential listing. And yep. also he's showing his buyer, why should I use you as my agent? Well, who else is going to do this for you? Remember, and, and you said this earlier, you said they might fill out forms on multiple places. Guess what? If you fill out one form on Zillow, one form on realtor.com, 10 agents are going to call you. It yep. doesn't even have to be. Yep. So this is showing value. And I, I say this all the time. What is the one thing that you can do? Because everybody says this, I'm a great agent. I'll work really hard for you. Okay. So did the, the last 27 agents I talked to you said right. that. What are you right. going to do for me? Well, you want to live in neighborhood X? I will literally call every single person in that neighborhood and ask them if they're interested in selling your house. Right. Right. Sounds like a great value add to me. Right. And I got a coattail on that a little bit. It's the same concept. I have a lot of clients Brian, that will tell me when they go to a listing appointment, they'll tell Mr. and Mrs. Seller, part of my marketing campaign is that I will personally call and email your closest 300 neighbors and ask them if they know of anybody who wants to move into the neighborhood, that they can pick up their neighborhood now. Will any other agent do that? So it helps you get the (laughs) listing on the spot just by saying that you'll do something like that, right? I mean, that alone is worth the value to convert people and people are like, oh yeah, I'll, yeah, it just gives you a reason. And then maybe it's in that rare occasion where the listing's on, on the market too long. And usually it's pri- you need a price adjustment at that point. If a house isn't selling, it's price adjustment most likely. So now you called and emailed all the neighbors and you have to ask for that price adjustment to get the house sold. Guess what? You can tell Mr. and Mrs. Seller, look at all the things I did. I personally called all your neighbors, emailed all your neighbors. It might be time for a price adjustment. So. That's going to get in the, the cart about in front of the horse a little bit, but just thinking outside the box on all the different ways that just having access to data helps you to get ahead of the game when it comes to other, other agents as well. Absolutely. And again, be different, preferably different and better, which is what I'm hearing from that. Exactly. And the biggest thing with everything, guys, it's a multi-channel approach. And a lot of my testimonials I love to use are from roofers and contractors because as a realtor, we're ahead of the game, right? We should, ha- we should know these things. We're a little bit, have a little bit of a marketing edge. But when I see contractors who say, hey, there's really no better way than to break into a community than with phone calls, individualized letters, emails, et cetera, it's like, oh yeah, this stuff really does work. Or here's a, uh, another, here's a contractor in Cincinnati. You know, We use it to get in contact with more prospects by executing a multi-channel approach using homeowner landlines, cell phones, and emails, right? To get brand recognition, increase our ability to, 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 to provide rel- relative, relevant content to homeowner, uh, homeowners, okay? Now, the last thing I want to talk about real quickly, Brian, is cloning your best prospects, building your avatar, okay? So everybody today, I, I challenge you, think, think of who your ideal prospect is. And it very well could be people, people that you already have access to. It could be people that you go to church with. It could be people, and then all of a sudden, then you could go to try to find a church directory, 
right? And get their contact information of other people that go to church with you. It uh, could be people that you go to work out with and somehow you could do something with the, the gym that you go to. Again, before COVID and after COVID is a different story, but, and try to find people that you go to go work out with, a rotary club that you're with, right? Uh, I know a lot of clients that are going to PTAs and they're sponsoring PTA events, right? To get in front of other parents, of other parents that your kids go to school with their parents, right? Those are what I call avatars, ideal prospect lists that you can go in and, and provide them, contact those people. And because you're in the same stage of life, you might have a higher response rate, right? Then you can use, and, and those could be free sources. So go out there and do some research. But then there's sources of data where you can use the analytics behind data to decide who you wanna go after. So for example, what Cole would allow you to do is you could target a couple of zip, zip codes, right? Maybe I want a zip code of 68516 and I want everybody who owns their home who's been there for at least 10 years and is above the age of 70. And now you can output that list of cell phones and emails and use it to fill the pipeline of people who are more likely gonna be moving based off of their age, their stage in life, their, you know, how long they live in their house, things like that, right? Uh, just kind of a thought. So, and that being said, I'm going to just jump into our system, but if people have questions, please put them in the chat box. I'd love to address them, but I'm going to just jump into our platform really quickly, guys, and just show you how you could build your, let's say, ideal avatar, right, with data. Any thoughts, questions about that while I'm doing that, Brian? So here was my thought. I think all too often, this is a realtor's approach. It's funny, well, you, you put a roofer up there. So I was in a group one time, was a networking group, and the roofer would stand up in front of the group and go, yep, my ideal client is anybody who has a roof. So one of the things that people miss about marketing is specific is 10 times more powerful than general. If I say I, I, need, a, I need anybody who gets a roof, you know who I get? I get nobody. And the same thing with agents. Like, the majority of, of single agents are looking to close, you know, 10 to 50 deals a year. Mm -hmm. So do you really need everybody to do that? No. Okay. Find the people who are your avatar, which is what you're going to talk about. People mm -hmm. who you have things in common with people who you, you know, let's say it sounds like you were going to target people over 70. Mm -hmm. Those are people potentially moving to, to um, retirement homes. So mm -hmm. what do I do? I market to those people. I become educated with that specific person. I help that group of people instead of I help everybody pick a couple of specific groups, get really good at it. And that is much, much, much more powerful than my, my average, my average, my person is everybody. So. Yep. Yep. Nope. You're exactly right. Yep. That's, and I use that con the, the phrase, a, a handyman who's a jack of all trades, but a master of none. Absolutely. Right. So go in and for Lincoln, Nebraska, you know, it's a smaller market, but it's still 300,000 people. You can't be all things, all people in Lincoln. Find a zip code, find a niche market. So yeah, so for example, I'm gonna log into our system. You Real sign quick for before you do that, there's a yeah. question. Uh, it, 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 um, this, is, it, this is different than the list I can get from my title company because yours has phone numbers and are the numbers not screwed? Are the numbers scrubbed through DNC? Yep, so yeah, so we'll have all possible phone numbers of, of cell phones, landlines, where available. It's gonna say OK or DNC next to the number. So based on your messaging, follow all laws, but based on your messaging, who you want to call and you can't call, right? And 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 then we have emails as well. I usually have an, an email for about half of all homeowners. Uh, so I don't know. If, again, I, every title company is a little bit different of what you can get, what you can't get. And there's a lot to be said that this is at your fingertips as well. You're not relying on another company to get you this data. So you can log in wherever you want to and you get access to your entire state. So for example, like I say, I want everybody in this zip code is 68516 that owns their home and maybe has a higher credit rating of at least 650 or higher and has uh, maybe been there for at least eight years, okay? I could narrow it down by income levels, home values. Maybe you're a big motorcycle guy. Johnny Mo, and I've done some uh, uh, event uh, webinars with him, he'll talk about he's a motorcycle guy. So he'll find all the motorcycles and people in his area to build that avatar list, right? Golfers, you know, different hobbies that you want to do. Obviously, the more criteria you put into your list, the smaller it's going to be. So I'm going to leave a lot of those blank for now. But I'm going to say, you know what, for this list, I want everybody who has at least one email address. So it's going to go real time, lasso this data with that criteria. So now at that zip code, I narrow it down. I found 4,600 people who own their home, 
who have an address and a name tied to it. Home phones were available, cell phones were available, and then they all have an email because I put that as part of my requirement. So now I could just download my list, put it right into Excel and I'm off and going, or I could add data attributes to it. So maybe I wanna add length of residence, or maybe I wanna add the age of each person. So I'm gonna add the age of each person. So now a bird's eye view, I have 82, 64, 60. So I'm gonna sort this before I download it, okay? And we'll walk everybody through this. We have lots of steps, but now all the people, it's sorted. So everybody who's above the age of 70 is floating to the top, right? So now what I might do is I might do a campaign about a webinar series on what to do after retirement, right? I might be interviewing retirement homes. And this is a little bit further along the road, Brian, but then you could upload this list. Let's say it's 2,000 people who are above the age of 70 and upload it into Facebook. And we have step-by-step -step instructions on how to do that for a custom audience. And if you buy, if you do custom audience and you use keywords like real estate, Facebook charges you an arm and a leg because they know realtors spend a ton of money on that, right? But maybe your message, your ad is just interviewing retirement homes, is interviewing financial advisors on what to do once you retire. You could do that stuff like for a buck a day and it's super affordable. You get in front of a ton of people, you get in front of these 2000 people that you upload and that is how you start really doing things very affordably, okay? Absolutely. We have a whole series on that. So if you sign up on how to get social, but that's something to think about as well. So again, it's a multi-channel approach, calling, emailing, door knocking. And that would be to do an entire zip code. Uh, the bread and butter is that neighborhood search that I, uh, that I was talking about earlier. And this isn't anything earth shattering guys. You've used, seen, you know, mapping features on other systems, but you could go in here. It will ask you for a starting point address or at least a street name within that zip code, right? So 68516, I want everybody who owns their home in that neighborhood. I want all possible records. It would give me a starting point address. If I'm looking for individual addresses, I can do that if I wanted to, to find maybe phone numbers for expireds. And I'm gonna map around it. And again, mapping, you've seen this before, but this would be able to find everybody in Edenton South subdivision, right? That's how you wanna find everybody in Edenton South map it out, shooting it really quickly. So again, this is the very hyper local about the community events that I talked to, to do a multi-channel approach. And again, you could add length of residence to your list. You could add the age, so it makes your meet conversations more meaningful. But I would challenge you, if you're doing a community event in a neighborhood, here's 1300 people who live in it, you can't predict a job transfer. You can't predict when somebody passes away. They can't predict a, a divorce. So you do wanna be contacting everybody right? But you can use the data and the analytics behind the scenes to prioritize who you want to talk to and use that information to have more relevant, conver uh, meaningful conversations with them. Cool. We had a couple of questions, Tyler. Um, does yep. it give best times to call? I was probably going to say no, but I'll, let, I'll throw that over to you. And I missed that. What'd you say, Brian? It says, uh, the question is, does it give best times to call? In other no, words? I mean, it's all dependent on the, the neighborhood, the city that you're in, right? I mean, if you're calling a, a brand new neighborhood, I mean, maybe it might, a lot of those people might have kids. They're going to be in school. Might not be a great time, right? If you're calling an empty nester neighborhood where people might be retired, any day is an okay time to call. What I do challenge everybody is dedicate an hour a week to get started. Dedicate one hour of calling people you don't know. Then you do two hours a week. Then maybe do one hour a day, right? Don't bite off too, more, too much more than you can chew. The other thing is, if you've never cold called before, it might be a little scary. So that's why I talk, I talk about those nonprofit stories, right? Is it scary to invite people to go donate blood? That's not that scary, right? Is it is scary to call into a neighborhood and say, hey, my family, the Joneses, that I'm representing, they want to live in your neighborhood. Is that scary? It makes it a little bit less scary by, by the messaging that you have as well. Absolutely. And, and, you know, a lot of people are afraid to cold call, but look at it this way. You're giving something to these people. Hey, we're, we're, we're running a charity drive. If someone wants to hang on, you know, F you on that, 
well, I don't want to talk to that person anyway. So, you know, at the end of the day, we're bringing value and it's more than that. So a couple other questions. Um, I think you answered this, but you can select a certain community from the map and actually yep. Tyre demonstrated that, but I just wanted to make sure yep. we did that. And um, somebody asked, what's the cost? Yep, let's just jump into that. Yeah, so we've charged, we have a couple of different plans. I'm gonna tell you about our most popular plan. It's a yearly plan for completely unlimited searches, unlimited downloads for the entire year. Normally it is $995 a year. It's about $1,000 a year, $995. We have a discount, a key, co key code tied to lab coat agents. So if you use the, the key code LV, LV200, it is a $200 discount. Nice. And so normally it'd be $9.95 for the year. It is $7.95 for the year. Unlimited searches, unlimited downloads, full state access, full training. You get a one-on-one -on -one training, scripts, you got it. So that is the price. We don't charge by the record or the download with this plan because we don't want to nickel and dime you. Just download as much as you want to. We do have a monthly plan. Uh, I'd rather have you just talk to one of our inside sales reps, but it only allows you to download 2,000 records a month. Uh, and then there's like a setup fee. So just talk to our inside sales reps and call our 800 number to talk to one of them to learn a bit more about that plan as well. And you can go to this landing page to learn mo more. Again, it's partner.coleinformation.com forward slash landing page, sorry, lab co agents. Wow, forward slash lab co agents uh, on here. And just go there to learn a bit more if you want to as well. And just have that, that page on here of what's all included. Absolutely. And if you guys noticed, Tyler had a bunch, you could see there's a bunch of videos, webinar replays. So, you know, if you're not sure where to get your next deal from, if you're not sure what you're going to do, mm -hmm. spend spend 795 bucks and then implement that. I mean, if yeah. you can't get one transaction out of that, then I, well, that's a different discussion. So right. <laughs> one other thing somebody asked, um, could you elaborate on finding contact information for expireds and FISBOs? So I know specifically how to do that, you know, but it's case by case, but you guys don't necessarily do a mass export of that on a daily mm -hmm. basis. Right. right. So I use my example again, sorry, Lincoln, Nebraska, but that's where I live. I've been here for uh, since college, right? Population 300,000. There is only a handful of expires that come up every morning in our market, right? Inventory is so tight here. And a lot of those expires end up just being new builds is what it is, right? Mm -hmm. So it, what you can do, like in a small market where there's never any expired, just look them up one by one, right? I mean, you can search by address on the MLS. It comes up first thing in the morning. Go into our system, type in 505 Apple Street. Oh, the Joneses live there. Here's their phone number. Call them, right? Yep. You can do that. If you have an old list of expired, I'm going to talk about Retriever. So if you have your own list of addresses, maybe you get a list from your title rep but they don't have very many phone numbers on it. Maybe you get a list from your assessor, whatever it is. You can actually upload a list of addresses up to a thousand at a time. They have to be in a certain format. There's a little bit of a learning there, but then we will append real time cell phones, landlines, and emails to that list that you upload into the system called Retriever. So that would be if you had access to maybe an old list of expireds that you got for your MLS, you can upload those and you're off and going. So those would all be included. And then the last thing I want to, I, I, I don't want to go over here is the 18 different things you can do using coal. But the other thing would be apartment renters. And I know we're all about listings, listings, listings. So I don't want to get off that topic. But I know we have a lot of buyer's agents who are on lab coats as well, right? Or you have a listing and you want to find and market it to first time home buyers. You could go in here and do it in an apartment renter search. So I picked apartment renters in a certain zip code. I don't know of any other data source that provides this information where we have the contact information of the actual tenants at that property. So you can see on Terra Drive, 2811 Terra Drive, tells you the apartment numbers, their cell phones and emails as well. So I know of a lot of the clients that are going in and they're doing first time home buyer virtual workshops and they're targeting apartment renters and inviting them to go to that as well. Yeah, it's a huge opportunity. And, and I and again, you know, talk, think about the different opportunities that we have here, guys. And, you know, if we want to continue to be slaves to I'm going to buy a lead, buy a lead, buy a lead, you know, by all means, that's going to work. However, realistically, over time, it, the, the market is changing. And the one thing that will never change is data is, is vital. And we can take that data and manipulate yep. it in whatever direction that we want to use it. And that's what Cole's all about.
Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. And then Tiffany, I know, is asking the question, well, how much data do you have? Okay. So every, every subdivision is going to be a little bit different, right? Every zip code is going to be a little bit different, but we've been doing this for 70 years. When it comes to data, uh, we're going to have a landline or a VoIP for everybody, right? You could get those straight from the phone companies, cable companies. So whoever has a landline still, we're going to have a cell phone number. If you look at the raw numbers across the board, every state's about the same. We have at least one cell phone for about half of all homeowners. Sometimes you'll see two or three cell phones for a, for a household. But if you condense it down to a household level, about a cell phone about half the time, and then an email address for about half of all homeowners as well. Sometimes two or three emails, sometimes zero. But those are the, that, that's sort of the information. And again, it, and it's a combination of calling the people you can call, email the people you can email, door knock, we can door knock again, upload into Facebook for a custom audience. And then Greg Harrelson will say, that is how you become a community dominator. And I got to give him, I think has a sexy twang to it, but that is his community dominator is, is how you do it. Awesome. Great questions, guys. I, I appreciate it. I mean, we're already at 40 minutes, but I want to keep on dragging this out. So I, I mean, I think a lot of, hopefully everybody got a little bit of a, a, a golden nugget that you can take out of this on how you can take your business to the next level. Now's the time to start looking at Q1 goals and how do you want to get there, right? So if you want to double your business from the year before, if you want to add one transaction a month, you have to be talking to more people. That's just sales 101. So I'd love for you to you know, consider Cole if we can maybe help you guys achieve those goals and where you want to get to. Uh, Brian, any closing thoughts from you? My, my closing thoughts is, is kind of simple as it can be. Just do it. So, guys, there's lots of fear around a lot of the stuff that Tyler talked about. But if you want, if you need something different, if you're one of those agents going, God, coronavirus has hurt my business. What do I do next? This is an easy, simple, relatively inexpensive option. Yep. You know, $7.95 for an entire year. So use the lab coats uh, discount on that. Yep. And if you think about that, seven ninety five, I think that's the equivalent in my market of three Zillow leads. Right. So yeah. you know, here's huge opportunities. Go out there and uh, and take advantage of a great a great product and a great way to control your own business. There's nothing else that we need more today than to grab that control yeah. back and help us dominate. Absolutely. Well, I appreciate the opportunity, Brian. Again, guys, if you do have any more questions, you just call our inside sales team at 800-800-3271 or just go online and find more information about us as well. So thank you so much, Brian. Really appreciate it. Tyler, I enjoyed it and uh, look forward to chatting with you again soon. All right. Talk soon, guys. Bye. Thanks, everybody.